Cafe 56 Kids. I'm so glad you chose to log on today. This is Lesson 19, and I am really glad you're here. If you could go back in time to any time and talk to one person, who would it be? If you could travel in a time machine to that to that one person that you would love to ask questions of or or hear their story straight from their mouth, who would it be and why? Why would you choose them? Not only that, but in the future, if someone else had a time machine, what kind of imprint would you want to leave on the world so that they might choose you to come back and talk to? If there was somebody who was going to travel back in time and talk to somebody really cool who did something amazing, who left an imprint, who who left a legacy, and they want to choose you, what, what, what would you want that legacy to be? What would you want to leave in the world so that somebody might go, I really want to go back and talk to this person? Well, today during our time of silence, that's what I want you to think about. If you, if you don't know, if, if you're kind of new to Cafe 56 and you don't know how these times of silence works, we take two minutes because our world has so much noise. There's always noise going on. There's music and the TVs are running and our phones are now making noise in our pocket. And we rarely just sit in silence. And so we do this kind of as a practice. It's just two minutes and we, we use it to kind of practice what it means to be quiet and just to, to sit in silence and listen maybe even to the voice of God. So um, what I usually do is I give you something to think about, something to kind of meditate on while you're being quiet. And we take two minutes to to just sit and think quietly. It's something our world does not teach us to do anymore. So what I want you to do today is think about that person that you would go back and meet and why. And not only that, but think about the kind of legacy you want to leave on the earth so that maybe somebody in the future would choose to come back and talk to you. As soon as we pray, we're going to take two minutes of silence to think about that question. So let's pray together. Oh God, author of the best stories ever told, help us to hear your stories with our ears. You have written countless great stories about many people from the past. As we enter these stories, make it as if we were there. Help us to see your stories with our eyes. You're still writing stories today. Help me to value your story above all the other stories being told. Help us to believe your stories with our hearts. Many forces want to write the stories of our futures, but only you can write our stories in the way they're supposed to be written. Help us to trust your stories with our feet. Amen. So what did you come up with? 
What kind of legacy do you want to leave on the earth? Do you have something? Maybe write that down. Maybe even start a journal and write down, this is the legacy that I want to leave. Maybe even title it legacy at the top because I think that is a great thing to have fixed in your mind. So let's start with a couple of review questions. We've been talking about this guy named Jacob. Can you remember anything about his family, his mom's name, his dad's name, his brother's name? I hope you said his dad's name was Isaac, his mom's name was Rebecca, and his brother's name was Esau. So Jacob stole two things from his brother Esau. Can you remember what those were? Jacob stole uh, his brother Esau's blessing and his birthright. That means he got Isaac, his father, to bless him the way he was supposed to bless Esau. But he also stole his brother's birthright, which means he got to inherit everything that his brother was supposed to inherit. Last question. When Jacob had to run from his brother because his brother was trying to kill him, he ran to his uncle Laban's house where he met a woman that he fell in love with. But his, his uncle got him to marry someone else first. Can you tell me who Jacob's two wives were? Rachel's two wives were named Leah, the older one, and Rachel, the younger one. I'm sure you got that one right. So let's start into today's story. So if you remember from last week, Jacob is running for his life again. He had built up his flock really big and his uncle's flock was shrinking and getting more sickly and, and small. His uncle Laban's sons were now wanting to kill Jacob. And so he has to run for his life again. When he, last time he ran, it was just him. That's pretty easy. This time he has two wives, he has servants, and he has 12 kids. He'll eventually have 13, but right now he has 12 kids. It's not easy to run with 12 kids. Jacob's son's names are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Issachar. Issachar. Boy, that's a weird one. And finally, Joseph and Benjamin. 12 sons. Jacob's son's names are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Issachar. Issachar. Well, that's a weird one. And finally, Joseph and Benjamin. Twelve sons. Jacob's sons' names are Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Issachar. Issachar. Well, that's a weird one. And finally, Joseph and Benjamin. Twelve sons. Now, Jacob is very proud of his family, and this was a time when having a big family was kind of a huge deal. In fact, it was so much of a big deal that Jacob's two wives got in competitions over, over who was having more kids, and, and there was a, a lot of stress and, and, and importance put on having a lot of kids. See, in Jacob's day, having a lot of kids was how you impacted the future. They didn't uh, have other ways to to leave a major mark. And so as long as your family name continued on and on and on into the future, then you knew that you were having a chance to have a legacy to impact what happened in the future. When a man and woman would grow very, very old, they could look at their kids and grandkids and sometimes great grandkids and know that all the work they did and all the good things they taught would get continued on and on and on from generation to generation. This gave them a lot of peace, knowing that it wasn't all wasted or for nothing. In fact, this was so powerful that they even almost considered this a way of living forever, that you could have eternal life if you had a lot of kids and grandkids. Now today we have a lot of ways of doing this. We have music and art and books and ideas and TV shows and movies. How many of you guys have ever watched an old movie? Uh, made by people who aren't even alive anymore. We we still have their work and their their art and ideas um, to inspire us today. So, I mean, think about it. Can you imagine how many people uh, look at the Mona Lisa every year or the Last Supper 
I mean, can you imagine those were made so long ago? And can you imagine how many people still get to enjoy them and look at their beauty? Can you imagine how many people still read and watch Shakespeare's play? Can you imagine how many generations are going to get to watch SpongeBob SquarePants? I hope not many. The main thing is these people get to inspire the future with art. And other people use idea. Did you realize that the ideas you are taught in your math books was discovered thousands of years ago by real people? Some people even impact the future with their money. There's been a lot of very, very wealthy people who have built hospitals and schools and, and whole cities sometimes left complete industries where things are made uh, behind them because they had the money to do that. They impacted the future with their wealth. And although these are uh, big grand ways that a select few number of people get to impact the future through their art and their ideas and their wealth, there's a million little ways we can impact the future. Every time we plant a tree that somebody else is gonna get to sit in the shade or, or eat its fruit, we've impacted the future. Every time we recycle, every time we uh, do some good in the world, we're having a chance to impact the future. So it's not just the big ideas, it's also the everyday things we can do that impact the future and leave a legacy. Let's watch a short video of what that looks like. เขาจะได้อะไรถ้าเขาทำแบบนี้ทุกวันเขาจะไม่ได้อะไรเลยไม่ได้รวยขึ้นไม่ได้ออกทีวีไม่มีใครรู้จักไม่ได้มีชื่อเสียงที่มากขึ้นเพราะสิ่งที่เขาได้คือได้แค่ความรู้สึกได้เห็นความสุขได้เข้าใจได้ความรักได้ในสิ่งที่เงินซื้อไม่ได้ได้โลกที่สวยงามกว่าเดิมในชีวิตคุณอะไรคือสิ่งที่คุณต้องการมากที่สุด Oh man is that good or what I love about this story most is it seems to tell us that the one way that we can impact the future the most is by loving the people around us, loving our families, loving our friends, being kind to our neighbors. The kind of thing that we're, when, when we love our family, they get to carry that with them and then share it with somebody else and share it with somebody else. The beautiful thing about this, this story that Jacob has so many kids is 
that it shows us the best way we can leave a legacy is by leaving a legacy of love. Look, the best way to impact the future is through kindness, through love, through being generous, through being good to the people around you. That's what Jacob's story teaches us. Jacob had 12 boys and a girl to send into the future with all of his ideas and, and love and resources. And it allowed him to impact the future all the way to us. The crazy thing to think about is the fact that we gather every week to talk about this man named Jesus who came from this family that went all the way back to Jacob. Jacob had a son who had a son who had a son who had a son and it led all the way to Jesus. To Jacob's legacy, what he left behind were these people that went all the way to the one person who would save the world. So even though you may not someday have someone in your family that is the savior of the world, I believe Jesus is the only one who will fill that role. You can impact the future. You can leave a legacy. You can leave your fingerprint on the planet by loving people, by being good to people. So I challenge you today to do that, to go out right now and love somebody, do something good for somebody. And by doing that, absolutely change the world. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to be world changers. We don't want to leave this planet the same way we found it. We want to make it better. And we know that the best way to do that is through love, through being good to people, through kindness and gentleness and selflessness like you showed. So help us to love well so we can leave a legacy and we can be part of your story. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This was Lesson 19. Thanks for joining us today. I love you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. Tune in next week for Lesson 20. And have a great and blessed week showing love to everyone around you.